Hello, let's make some progress in our wallpaper switching script that we call BWP. Bring up some terminals. This is Thunar here uh, with the BWP directory open. As you can see, there uh, are no images again here now because I would like to add this add to library uh, functionality that I showed you in the demo, you know, with the uh, parallel stuff and things like that. So, yeah, let's start with that. Um, let's do it like this. Copy this part here. Now we have moved like add, add to library. That is a separate function here now. <clears throat> so so um, we can add our parallel functionality in, the, in this file I think let's just paste that stuff here see what it is here we have test if it is a directory then do this and then we could also test if it's not the file maybe that should be the first test and then we negate this test instead then this is not a file or no, that's not good either. We, te we test for the directory first. Uh, so if if um, If uh, uh, the argument here to add to library is a directory, then we do this fine stuff, pipe that to the parallel stuff, and then we should also make sure to exit the script here. So we don't continue with the uh, rest of the stuff, because what we do in our parallel is actually call the command itself, bwp again with the a option, uh, but this time with, with one of the uh, uh, lines here in, in this find command and really quickly this find command it searches src which we know is the directory here so that is where we search i regex that means that uh, it will search for files matching uh, this pattern uh, and i stands for uh, case insensitive so uh, uh, it searches for, for for files that ends with jpeg or png uh, and then I use this print zero to use a, a, a null character as a, a delimiter. It's recommended to do so when you when you do this stuff. And then we pipe that uh, to parallel here that I talked a bit about in the last video. Let's remove this for now. Get back to that. Um, but here I also thought that you know parallel we can also use exorgs. Uh, it will work. It, it it's just slower than parallel. Uh, but of course parallel is better uh, but it's not that common maybe it isn't installed on the system you know uh, so we could make a test here to, to, to make sure that parallel is installed if it isn't then we use xorgs uh, and to, to find find out if a command is installed uh, in a portable way uh, is to use command uh, hyphen v and then the name of the command And then it uh, prints like the path to the command. If it's a command that doesn't exist, it prints nothing. But another important thing here is that it also exits with an error uh, status if, if the command doesn't exist. And that means you can use this uh, in ifs and else and stuff. So here we could make an uh, yet another if command v parallel uh, and also we can pipe the output to dev null so, so we don't see this uh, path because now we just test if it exists. Then, then we could do one for, we could even do one for xorgs even if that should really exist and, or maybe that's overkill you know because if find exists then xorgs exist basically. Um, but we add this test here and this is kind of an interesting uh, method here now do this. So 
So we do this find command, uh, pipe the output to this block here. And inside this block, this is where we can do this test if we want to. Just tested this out. I've never done uh, something like this before, but it, apparently it worked, so why not? And then, when we know that parallel, parallel is installed, then we can execute the command. If it isn't ex uh, installed, then we can use the, use the xorgs method. And then we close this file. I'm not even sure if we need these uh, 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 curly braces here, but I, I think so. And even if we don't, it just makes it more obvious what's going on. So I will leave them and then we exit the script af after this one of these uh, are completed. So now we should be able to add uh, directories here, I think. Let's try it out. BWP A uh, picks OK wallpapers. And it created it. And you can also see this bar here. That's just an option to parallel to get a progress bar to see what's going on. Yeah, of course, didn't work correctly because I haven't cleaned up the command. Uh, it's in our conversion here. Yeah, 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 I know what it is. Because, um, yeah, I've been doing some experiment. We get back to this soon, um, but why it's not working is because these lines are missing from, from the main function. This this is how it looks like looked like before. We will change this soon. Now it should work. Yeah, let's also delete everything here so we can start clean. Now it will take more time. Okay, um, so I, I've added these test images. Uh, try to get some with a somewhat su a summary vibe, you know, because summer and court. Um, Okay, add the library. Now, when we have this part here, we could, uh, there are uh, some more uh, improvements we can do here to, to our add to library uh, function. One is uh, kind of obvious uh, because what we do is we test, you know, if, if the file already exists in the library. Yeah, this is something we also need to add here. Uh, we get back to that. Um, if the file already exists in the library, we, we print an error. If uh, the f flag is not set, you know, force. Uh, otherwise, we, we convert the source image to this target image, which we set the target here, you know, which is this. And this conversion, all that does is resizing the image, uh, keeping the aspect ratio and, and so on. Uh, and this is fine because we want to um, we want to resize the image to to the so we already have done so, but uh, this is completely bloat if uh, we all if, if the image is already the same size as the target size, then we we don't need to do this at all. Then we can just skip this and just copy the file instead. Uh, so to to. And there's, of course, an easy way to figure out the, the, the size of an image before we do this. And that is uh, using image magic as another command called identify. So let's go here to the walls directory. Walls directory. And then you can use, or let's do this also, identify cheese balls. And there you can see it prints a bunch of information here. So a lot of this I have no idea what, what it is, but JPEG, interesting. Image dimensions, interesting. And you can uh, also use this, it's great. Identify, format, and then a format string. So then you can do something like, um, cheese balls. And there, now it only prints uh, the, the format and the dimensions of, of it with, with this format string. We could try another image. And you can see this. So this is what we will use. I will link in the show notes the documentation for this identify command here on Image Magic's 
or this is just the documentation for the format string. It, it, I love uh, image magic. It's so cool, you know, you have all this just for that. It's, it's great. Whatever. Um, makes me happy. Copy this. Uh, to this place. And then we create an array here. Image info is equal to the unquoted output of this command. We replace the file here with the SRC variable. And this will now create an array with two uh, elements. Uh, this and this. And then we maybe should start by, by seeing if we have a JPEG or a ping file. And if we don't, then we, we abort. And then you could, of course, extend this if you want to support more image formats, but I really don't. So uh, let's just do uh, image info dollar uh, zero, which is the first element there, the, f the format contains ping or jpeg and it will always be written like this in uppercase so so this 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 works uh, if it does whatever uh, or exit you could even do this or error message exit with uh, src let's put it like this src is not uh, an image there and we have that then we set the target here that is fine um, testing if the target exists then we resize the image but only if uh, image info one which is the second element which is the di dimension is the same as or if it is the same as this then we just copy the file else we convert it I don't think we will see much of a difference here now if we try this or if we try it now we will probably just get like already exist in the library yeah all of these already exist then we can use the the f option you know to force force this but that didn't work uh, either because uh, this is how it works now we pass a directory here to add to library the force flag is set so we want to force but then we get to this point. Yes, this is a directory. Uh, parallel command exists. Send all files there with this command. With this command, and here we need to add the f option uh, to this line here, but only if f is present here. And of course, we could do some stupid test, but we could also use some bash magic and write it like this: uh, o f colon plus dash f. Of course. And now it should work here with the F flag. Yes. And how this works, it tests here if if uh, O F here in, in our array, you know, we store each uh, present command line option, set it to one. Here just test if that variable is set at all or if this element in the array is set at all with this plus character. If it is set, then it will uh, print dash F. If it's not set, then it will, will not do anything here. So this is a, a way to do this. But it's really difficult to see how, how much we, we time we, we earned by, by testing here and copying the file instead of converting. But, it, but it is, uh, uh, there is a difference, especially where the more files, the, the faster this is. And of course, it depends on the size of the files and, and stuff like that. Um, Another thing uh, that is cool here, uh, we, we will 
both gain some some uh, efficiency, uh, making the script a little bit faster. But it, we we also add another cool thing by by doing this, because we test here for this this thing. Uh, if we store this in an environment variable instead, that we can call, or god damn it. that we can call uh, BWP geometry instead and then we can set that or we don't set it but just to remind ourselves that we have this environment variable McCree, but we, we, we set it to a blank here mm -mm -mm. Then in, in add to library. Yeah, now we have this. This is where we find out the geometry. You know, we use i3 list and store uh, yeah, the, the workspace dimension and use that. And we do this every time we execute the script. That's stupid. Uh, both um, when we do, if, if we, right now we only have this add to library function uh, going on. But uh, when we add like changing wallpapers and stuff like that, we don't need uh, information about the wall uh, workspace and stuff. It's it's only when we uh, generate images we need this, and only if the uh, geometry is unknown. If if this environment variable would be set, then we don't even need to do the i3 list at all. Uh, so one uh, quick improvement we could do is is to add all that you know here. And then, um, yeah, I think this will work actually. Yeah, now it will set those variables and stuff. But now uh, we, we are not looking for those variables. We are looking for BWP geometry. And that is, uh, of course, BWP geometry is equal to i3 list active workspace with uh, x i3 list active workspace height so now uh, it, it will work um, but we can uh, as I just mentioned make it even even more efficient here and, and only do this when, when needed because when we add uh, multiple files here with parallel or xorgs then it will um, I guess we should also add this option stuff here. <clears throat> With XORGs, um, then it will do this every time, this i3 list, but it, then we really know that it is, of course, the same uh, geometry every time. So I created this function here, get geometry, which tests if uh, the, the uh, environment variable BWP geometry is set. If it is, then it echoes. Uh, the value of the uh, of that uh, variable. Otherwise, it do, do this i3 list thing and echo that. So that means we could could um, change this to this instead. Now I will add yet another uh, one of these, but but that's completely fine to do so. Uh, let's remove the quotes here. Get geometry. So now it will set this to, to the output of get geometry, but only if it's if it's unset. Which it will be, and now we can remove these lines. And it will be unset uh, every time here. But we can also add this, at this time we add it like this, because you can set environment variables from the uh, command line uh, before you execute a command, like this. Um, so now we, we kind of define this variable before we execute it, and that, then that variable is available in the environment of the command. I know th this this is a bit of uh, inception mode here, but whatever. 
we also added to the Xorx uh, option here. And now it should be faster. Now it will only need to do that ith release one time uh, uh, here, uh, and yeah, it, it, it's much better. So I don't think we will see any difference here because it's so few files, but it is uh, a, a small difference. But one cool thing with this environment variable is that we could also set it from, from uh, uh, the command line here before we uh, do this. So if I clean the library, or clean it completely here, and then do this, then, then we can set this environment variable here. Yome ye ome tree is equal to let's let's make a vertical version you know and, and set it to uh, 1080 1920 and then bwp dash a this is I, I added this backslash here to escape the new line so so this is uh, one line you could of course write it in one line I just did this to, to make it more readable uh, add uh, pix ok wallpapers so now it should generate vertical versions of, of the wallpapers if this works it of course didn't something really weird happened shell knitter retrieving current directory get cvd can what happened there we got some walls and stuff i have no idea what happened there Ah, now I know, I know. This error message, uh, it, it is related because we executed the command when the directory didn't exist. That was, uh, it had nothing to do with, with the script or anything. It was because we, we were in the walls directory and I deleted it here in Thunar, but in the ter then it gets really weird when you do that. So now we shouldn't get any error messages and it should generate uh, uh, vertical versions of, of the, the wallpapers now we can also see the the benefit of re resizing it in this uh, way that we do here uh, by setting this gravity center and extent and stuff here because as you can see or i guess it's hard to see uh, but the, the 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 aspect ratio is correct of, of, of the wallpaper uh, doesn't uh, skew the image but it crops the image images instead and that is the drawback of course so some images here like this cat for example maybe you would would like it would would like it different but most of the time on the cheese balls we only get half cheese balls but half a jar of cheese balls is better than than no cheese balls at all you know most of the time uh, i i think this works fine especially with the when you when you have a completely different aspect ratio as we have here uh, and you know we have two environment variables we have the geometry we also have the directory here we could set both of them um, does this work oh god damn it let's write it from the start we could set a, 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 a different directory as the library um, we could even do something like this, set it, setting it to BWP, but then, then let's store them in, in a, a directory called vertical. And then we can set the geometry 1920, no, 1080x1920, BWP. Uh, add fix okay wp so now we added uh, a new library inside <laughs> this library but that's uh, we can could do can do that of course you get problems if you uh, add a library with, with the name of one of the folders but now we have the verticals in its own library here and then you could of course make make more more versions of the wallpapers and and, and this is kind of kind of a 
nice thing because uh, if you have uh, multiple monitors maybe you have a, a, a vertical monitor maybe you have a laptop with a different uh, resolution like I do I have one that have uh, 1600 by 900 resolution could add that now it will create a laptop directory with that resolution of the images here we can see that and then you could uh, do more you know that uh, this is really convenient uh, to, to keep multiple versions of, of uh, wallpapers and at the same time we, we still have these original wallpapers you know in the uh, PIX OK wallpaper so you can have like a library with, with high quality high definition wallpapers and resize them for, for the different units that you want to use them for you can also see here quite a uh, big difference the time when we did the uh, uh, vertical screens. I guess it have to, have to do more calculations to do with the images when they are in a completely different aspect ratio. Okay. Um, yeah, that's good. And I think uh, <laughs> that that's enough, right? Or let's add the blur functionality. Because I've been thinking here, I've been testing and, and uh, examining um, some stuff here, uh, especially the, the size of the library. Now this is a stupid example, but we can use our, my old library here. Uh, human, total, everything. And here we can see the walls of, of this library. The, it's 222 wallpapers, I think. 466 megabyte. When I did the, the exact same uh, uh, set of images with, with our new BWP here, this uh, was uh, 120 megabyte. But the locks directory was almost the same size. It was 400 megabytes in, in with BWP since I link every uh, ping image. But the thing is, I only had uh, 35 PNG images, so it had to convert almost all JPEGs to lock screens anyways, and you can see that that is what, what really steals uh, and takes up a lot, lot of space. And I've been thinking, yeah, and the blurs takes up about 15 megabyte or, or maybe more, 30, 30 megabyte of 200 walls or something. But um, the big uh, uh, disk space thief here is the walls directory. And you know, we, we really don't, we, we don't need to generate the locks. Uh, uh, lock PNG. Let's just do that when we actually lock the screen and when we do we could save it so it's faster to lock it the next time but we, we will make some, some dirt text to make it feel like it's just as fast as if the image was already generated but we will save like half a gigabyte uh, of, of space as you can see here 1.2 gigabytes for 200 wallpapers that, that, that is too much and that is stupid and if we do it uh, in the way that I am uh, thinking of now, we, we will get down to around 10% of this, maybe 150 megabytes instead. And that's kind of different and it will also be a lot faster. This, this took about over 5 minutes to generate this. In BWP, same set of images, to, took about 3 minutes. But without the locks it will be very fast, we will probably get down under a minute. So that's really something we, we, we should do. But um, the blurs, we need to make uh, blurred versions. And maybe we, we, we can do that now. And I think we can do it in, in like one minute because it's it's extremely easy. We, always, we will always do the uh, blurred versions. And um, so we don't need to make any test or anything. We just need to add the command here. And I have it here somewhere here. It should be, here it is. So this if else is just a test if we need to resize it. But no matter if we resize or not, uh, we, we blur. Blur the wall. And here I don't know why I have this resizing stuff here. That shouldn't be part of this. Um, move these guys somewhere here. Because I am there and uh, blur this is like the blur formula I don't really know how this works you can experiment with this to get different types of blur and stuff uh, but I found that you need to set this uh, set ping format ping 32 here 
otherwise it will not blur, uh, it will not work with JPEG images. I know it's a bit weird, but uh, this is how it works. Another thing is that the source, when we blur, is the target of the resized image. And the target of the blur is the same as the target, but we replace the, the word walls with blurs uh, uh, in, in, in the yeah, file name. So now if we do another BWPA, yeah, and if we do one without uh, setting any of these uh, environment variables, then it will default to the default values, which is the screen size and, and uh, yeah, the normal uh, uh, library. And let's add the force flag here now also so it will overwrite and we can see uh, how much longer it will take to, to add the blur. It will probably be some time, but it is quite fast actually. Or, yeah, everything is relative, you know. 18 seconds. 18 seconds for uh, 14 images. So, yeah, it's more than a second on average per image. Uh, we can we can can think of it as. And that is not too bad actually. And now we have these blurred versions here, of course. So now that we have all this, uh, we can uh, start adding more functionality here. Add our uh, history. Uh, and the actual setting wallpaper command and stuff. So, so we do that uh, in the next video. Thank you everybody for watching. Uh, have a great day. Be sure to, to be out in the sun. Uh, swim in the oceans. If, if it's summer where you are. If it's not, have a great day anyway. <laughs>